now. You're listening to the Radio Whammo Breakfast, only on Kiwi. Well, the best ideas are free, so says Ben Young. That's the name of his uh, new book. You can go check out his blog at uh, bwaggy.com, B-W-A-G-Y. Hit him, hit him up on Twitter as well, twitter.com forward slash Waggy Ben Young joins us in the Kiwi studio this morning. Good morning, Ben. Good morning. Lovely to have you in once again. Likewise. You have had a busy old week over the past week, haven't you? Oh, it's been crazy. Uh, there was TEDx Auckland on Thursday. Then I went to um, a telecom unconference from Friday through till Sunday. Good. Now, we'll find out what the unconference is about shortly, but I do want to talk about th- this TEDx. Now, I've heard of TED. Okay. So, t- TED is a conference set up in the States, and it's about talking about ideas that are worth spreading. So they get people that are leaders within their industri- industry, but from right across the board. That, that's their byline, isn't it? Ideas that are worth spreading, yep. which is brilliant yep. byline. It's, yeah. So the idea is that you come to a conference, and rather than a standard industry conference where you hear you know, some people from abroad doing things in your industry, when you go to a TED conference, you hear ideas from all across the board. Okay. And from that, you can get a lot of inspiration and and. It's all about learning, really. And so it's originally for the people who go to the, the TED conference, and then it's all made available on the web, isn't it? Yeah. So after every TED conference, they upload all the videos up to TED.com, that's T-E-D.com, mm. so that anyone in the world can watch them. And there's a huge range of videos up there, such as there's a, a monk talking about what is happiness and how can you be happy, and people have actually done scientific analysis and broken it down and what makes someone happy. Wow. And uh, there was another one that I watched recently, which was Mytricity, and they've created wireless electricity. Right. And so jumping on TED exposes you to these new ideas that you would, you know, they're not going to pop up anywhere else. It's kind of really inf- inspirational stuff, eh? Yeah, very. Yeah. You watch it and you feel you feel inspired to perhaps do something yourself or yeah. or, or you, mi- you feel that your mind has expanded just that little bit more. Yeah, I, I think it recreates that feeling when, you, when you're when you a child and you're at school and you, you heard about something completely different, like the hovercraft, yeah. and that kind of blew your mind. It, yeah. it reignites that electricity. It's kind of what television should be, eh? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. <laughs> but as, as I say, it's made available on the web, TED, TED.com. Yeah. Now, then they, then they have these franchises around the world, and this is yeah. the one that happened last week in Auckland City, TEDx. Yep, they had TEDx Auckland, so this is an unofficial event but supported by ted.com mm-hmm. and so it was free and it was over at uh, Westlake Boys High School set up by the Department of Doing I believe Okay. and I, I think there were about 300 people and um, about 8 speakers and so they had speakers from all over New Zealand talking about a wide range of things like um, Ray Avery who's developed uh very cheap glasses for the developing world. I think they're five or six US dollars, which they either licensed or have done a technology transfer with the Fred Hollows Foundation. Yep. Uh, they had Nigel Parker from Microsoft, and he was talking about technology and how failure needs to be a crucial part of businesses. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and there was a, a wide range of other things. Did they speak well, these speakers? Yeah, they spoke quite well. It, there were a couple that you could tell were a bit intimidated by the audience, but the content was really, really good. Because generally at a TED conference, there's a lot of charisma on stage, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Because they have such a good filter that they only get the people that are really passionate. Yeah. And you're not allowed to self-promote or talk about your own product oh. or you know push your own business. So that weeds out a lot of the standard yeah. talks that you get at a conference. So it's not an infomercial? No. Okay. Definitely not. Yeah. And what, and what about, did it look like a TED conference to you? Definitely. They had all the lighting and the same layout. And, and once it's online, once you watch it, the only way you'll be able to tell it's from New Zealand is the accent, I, I guess. Okay. So they, these talks are actually going to go up on the main site, TED.com? Yep. They'll be up on TED.com for the world to see. Was there, was there a standout for you, a highlight? Uh, my favourite would have been uh, the I Have a Dream Foundation. And... Uh, I forget the guy's name, but what they do is they go into schools, decile one schools in New Zealand, and they talk to kids and help them develop a dream. What do they dream and how to achieve that? Okay. And they've actually made a commitment, I think, Mount Ross School, for one classroom, 53 students to cover their entire costs of study up until tertiary education. Yeah. And so they expect at least 30 of that 53 in this low decile school will get to tertiary education 
which is amazing. Cool. Um, and and for you, do you feel that you it's something that you're going to do? Uh, if you've, I get, I, get I would love motivation? to partake. Yeah. Um, maybe next year, fingers crossed. What do you think <laughs> you'd talk about? I, I would like to talk about how you take an idea and actually execute it. There's a there's a lot of talks around when you have a business idea or mm. a personal idea on how to achieve that. Yeah. But I think there needs to be something a little bit more general and a little bit more hands-on. Okay. On how you take an idea when you just think of it to, to making it happen. Yeah. I get, I get ideas all the time. Yeah. None of them ever realized. Yeah. But how many <laughs> did you try and realize? <laughs> um this is the, 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 this is probably the main one. To tell you the truth, being be, doing doing radio, talking to interesting pe- people, yeah, uh, is probably the, the the big idea that I that, that that hit me one day. And it's not new; it's not a fresh yeah. idea. Yeah. But for for me to personally do it, that was the one that was one thing. Yeah, I just want to p- pull out that point. It's not a fresh idea. That's a big thing that you get from Ted. No matter your problem. It's increasingly obvious that someone else has experienced the same problem, but in a different industry or in a different way. Right. And so that's what I'd like to extrapolate on. There's, there's almost a framework of taking an idea, finding someone else that has done it, then applying it, then making it happen. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, one thing that we're doing now, uh, streaming online video and and then making those available on demand. It's not a, it's not a new idea in the world, but it's a new idea here yeah, in definitely. New Zealand. And I guess that's another thing. I suppose I'll be. Well, I guess I'm not doing too bad. I'm executing executing a few of them. Oh, you're doing a, doing a fine <laughs> job, I must say. <laughs> ben, let's talk about um, unconferencing. What is that? So, with a normal conference, you turn up. The agenda set months in advance, and they bring speakers from all around your industry, maybe the, the oddball or two, and then you go and sit down and you listen. You're supposed to absorb and soak in all the new information, and then you can do some networking at lunch. And so it's very much a, it's like reading the paper. It's almost one way. Sure, they have a small Q&A. Yeah. But you're only really there to listen. Yeah. Now, with an unconference, all the attendees, when they turn up, they set the agenda. So you turn up and there's just lots of time slots and rooms associated. And everyone can put up an idea or a concept that they want to talk about and put it in an available slot. Oh, that could turn into chaos, surely. Well, you'd be surprised. You'd think it would be chaos, but it's very self-selecting mm. because there is a limit on the rooms available. And also, you're putting your name up there, so someone's not going to put up a topic that they're not passionate about or be willing to talk about. So you're saying before this weekend, there was no agenda set for it? There was no general topic no. at all? No. Can you say what the general industry that you, you went to what oh, was it for? It, it was... It was a telecom unconference. Okay. So it was a mix of in- internal um, telecom staff with external people just um, running an, inf- an unconference. And really, the focus was on getting that mix of people. It wasn't just supposed to be a telecom focused conference. And it wasn't just supposed to be um, about the externals trying to sell themselves. To but it. telecom would have been looking for what? New, new ideas for their business out of it? I, I think key thing was the cross-pollination and that is the difference with an unconference it's the people you meet and in each of the sessions it's less of a talk as it is a discussion Mm. so that the best um, sessions that I've run in unconferences is where I've put a very very direct topic and then you only have about 12 people and you just kind of come together in a circle and and have an open conversation Mm. because people can cut to the chase and ask the questions that they're really struggling with. Mm. What 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 topic did you set? Uh, The one that I've been talking about in recent unconferences is the development of attraction-based distribution networks. And, for example, what you're listening to now is exactly one of those. You listen because you want to. Right. If you don't want to, you tune out. Yeah. And that's exactly what YouTube, blogging, and Twitter are. Okay. And so I've just been talking about the development of that and how you can utilize those permission assets to help grow your business. So how, uh, is that, does that involve finding customers, finding an audience? Well, the first step is to put yourself in your customers' shoes and help them. Mm. And once you start doing that and you show it to a few customers, they will naturally start sharing it with other customers mm. okay so at the, at the end of the conference do you feel that that um, people came away with something or were their minds so muddled with so many mixed messages it was a bit weird i think they definitely did 
at an unconference, what you find is that themes do begin to appear. Right. And and when you ha- when you are a couple of days in, people have almost they've gone through those themes and then stripped them apart and rebuilt them and provided a greater understanding. Well, general conditions that um, that people are doing business in or socialising in set that theme naturally. Yeah. Right. So, so there is always that element of what what is happening happening in the industry. That in an unconference, you're getting people from all different areas. Yeah. So it's not the same as walking in and saying this is an industry trend in internet marketing. What, what is the trend when you put all industries together and get them talking about it? Interesting. Well, that's um, that's uh, we now know what an unconference yeah. is. Might have the pleasure of going to one one day, and um, and of course Ted X as well. Thanks very much, uh, Ben Young. Thank you. Find Ben Young on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash Bwaggy or Bwaggy.com.